Before we have a look at the physical mechanics of actually carrying out 3D referencing, it's probably worth just explaining a little what 3D referencing is. 3D referencing gives you the ability to group worksheets together and then find a mathematical value, not necessarily adding up, but any mathematical function, based on the same cell in each of those sheets that you've grouped together. So in our little example here on the 3D sheet, we have a blue sheet, a sort of yellowy color sheet, a green sheet, and a red sheet. Each of these sheets represents a worksheet in our workbook. And the idea of 3D referencing is that you can effectively put these sheets on top of each other, drill a hole through exactly the same cell in each of those sheets, and then have a formula that works out, in our case here, the sum. Sum of all four sheets, cell G3. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a single cell, but it does have to be the same cell or range in all of the sheets. That's really how the 3D referencing works. So let's see in action. Here we're using the 3D sales data sheet, which has 12 months of the year, January all the way through to December. That's December. What we would like to do in the summary sheet is create a summary of all 12 months. Well, the first thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to copy all of the cells from there and paste them in the summary sheet. I'm actually going to paste them a little bit off the left just to prove that where the summary goes has no relevance to how the 3D referencing works. However, each of the other sheets must be exactly the same makeup. Now, we're not going to need the values in here because we're going to go get those but we'll leave the other functions in place. So we'll still leave the totals adding these up, the totals adding these up, count adding each of the cells, and then the lowest and the highest are using the min and max functions. So each of these cells now is going to pick up, for example, north car sold, all the north car sold in January, in February, in March, in April, in May, in June, in July, in August, September, October, November, and December. Now we could attempt this the long-winded method, which is to say equals January B3 plus February B3 plus. I'm just typing plus and then clicking on the next sheet, clicking on the cell. Excel's putting the correct syntax in for me then, which is the name of the sheet, exclamation mark, the cell, plus April B3 plus May B3 plus June. B3. Now, hopefully, you're getting the idea. We're selecting each sheet, selecting the cell, then going plus, selecting the next sheet, selecting the next cell. And we would need to do this 12 times until we had across the top of here our function, which would be January exclamation mark B3 plus February exclamation mark B3, etc., all the way through to plus December exclamation mark B3. Once I'd picked up all 12 cells, I would then press return to take me back to my summary sheet and I would see the function in place. Now that function really is quite long, and that's only the six of the months in. All 12 of the months, it would be twice as long. If we were adding up 24 different sheets, it would be four times as long as it is now. This is where 3D referencing comes into play. So instead of writing out these long intersheet linking formulas, we're going to delete that, and we're going to start with what we want to do, which is to add up. So equals sum, open brackets. That's my function, that's what I want to do. I want to do some summing. And what I would like to sum is all the sheets from January to December. So I can do that by typing the name of the first sheet, colon, the name of the last sheet. So Jan, colon, deck. Then it needs an exclamation mark to tell it that they are sheet names. Now, if my sheet names contain spaces, I need to put single speech marks around my sheet names so that Excel spots that that's the sheet name and not a gap in the formula. I then need to tell it the cell reference, which was B3. And when I close brackets, that is my 3D referencing formula. Much, much shorter than that Jan plus B3 plus Feb plus B3, etc. It's equal sum because that's what I want to do. And I could do any of the mathematical functions. I could average, I could min, I could max, I could count. Open my brackets, the first sheet, colon, the last sheet, exclamation mark B3. Now every sheet that physically exists along my sheet tabs here, 
between January and December, we'll have the contents of B3 collected into this result. So it is important that all the sheets between Jan and December are in exactly the same layout. They don't have to be the same format, they don't have to be the same color or anything like that. But the cell value you're trying to pick up has to be in the same place in all of those sheets. Then I can press return and I get a result of 2940. Now we're going to do the plain sold. We're going to add in a 3D reference, but we're going to just pick it up a slightly different way. So it's equals sum, open brackets. Now this time, instead of typing the name of the sheet, I'm going to click onto it. And you can see here in the formula bar, it's picking up what I'm trying to do, which is Jan B3. And the ability to click means I don't have to spell the sheet name correctly, and I don't have to remember which cell I want because I can see it and I can click on it. The trick now is to tell it how to go all the way to December. Well, that's achieved firstly by bringing that tab into view. So I need to just scroll along. And then I go to December, but don't click just yet. You need to hold down the shift key, then click on deck for December. And you can see then the whole formula is inserted correctly. You'll also see that because I've done click clicking rather than typing, Excel has placed two little speech marks in around my sheet names, having picked up the whole range and the cell that I want, although it isn't the cell that I want because I'm now on planes. So I move across, it's actually C3. And then I can press return. That takes me back to the summary sheet. I see 408 is the total number of planes sold between Jan and December. You'll also notice in the formula that the little single speech marks have gone because I haven't got any spaces. But while I was clicking, it placed them in for me. Now, having created the 3D formula, I don't need to do it for every single cell. I can take those two and drag them to the bottom of there, and they will get filled in. However, the formatting has gone to pot, but we know how to do that. We say, fill without formatting. And then I can take all of those and drag them across to here and do the same thing, fill without formatting. All of these, because of the relativeness of Excel formulas, are now picking up the correct cell in all the sheets. So that one's equal sum January to December, F5. So F5 must be the speedboat sold in the east. Let's just check on August. Speedboat sold in the east is F5. And that effectively is your 3D referencing. Obviously, these numbers are bigger in the summary, and some of them are too big to display. So we'll just widen up a few of the columns. And we have cracked, very useful, extremely helpful 3D referencing. Equals the function name, open brackets, first sheet, colon, last sheet, exclamation mark, the cell or cells that you're trying to carry out a formula on. If we quickly replicate our table, a bit of a copy, come down underneath and paste. I'm going to delete those particular cells there and replace them with an average 3D reference. So equals average, open brackets, the first sheet, car sold north, shift, click on December. So it's now going to average the sales from January to December for B3, return, and I get 245. I can then replicate that formula across, filling without the formatting, and then replicate them down, again, filling without the formatting. And we're now looking at the average value of cars sold for the North throughout the 12 months. Fantastic ability, this 3D referencing.